The New York Jets have an abundance of draft picks. They have a bunch of cap space. Can they make a trade this offseason? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and today I'll be talking about five different players that intrigue me on the trade market. And before we get started today, I just want to mention that you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why if you haven't already, you could also subscribe to the Just Jets podcast and Just Jets Clips channel down below in the description. Much appreciated. So a very, very long time ago, the New York Jets used to be fun. And what I mean by that is they had a good team, they were competitive, and they were were actively trying to be competitive and a part of their roster building in some of the more fun seasons in my lifetime were due to trades. Even for instance, the last time we had fun as Jet fans, 2015, Brandon Marshall, big time trade and they didn't give up that much for him. Ryan Fitzpatrick acquired via trade. Is that sustainable? Maybe not. But even prior to that, when the Jets were really going for it, Braylon Edwards acquired via trade. Santonio Holmes acquired via trade. Uh, wasn't Chris Jenkins acquired via trade? Or it might have been a late uh, a, a free agent signing. But nonetheless, the Jets tried to get things going via the trade. And it's something they should explore because, well, while I like having a bunch of draft assets, it's a good thing. Nine and ten people draft classes every single year is also more than likely not a sustainable approach to building a roster. So let's talk about five different players. Yes, there are more players on the list that they could potentially look to trade for. These are just five that jump out to me that have been brought up. We'll start with a wide receiver in Amari Cooper. He's just 27 years old, which he feels like he's been in the league for an eternity, but he's still only 27 years old. And he's coming off a down year, but a down year for him would be a phenomenal year for just about any other Jets receiver. 865 yards, eight touchdowns. Now, the eight touchdowns part is pretty intriguing. 800 yards is pretty good. Is it, you know, $20 million a year good, which is right around where he's going to be making, especially after being traded? No, but the two years prior to that, 1,100 receiving yards. He's a bona fide number one, and he's still in his prime. He has three more years under contract, so you'd have him for his age 28, 29, and 30 season. Great. That is in the same window as both Elijah Moore's rookie contract. Phenomenal. It's in the same window of Zach Wilson's rookie contract. Phenomenal. It's in the same window as Elijah Vera Tucker's rookie contract, potentially Makai Becton's rookie contract. Like these are all good things to have because yes, paying $20 million a year for a wide receiver is tough in today's NFL. You can do it, but it's tough. You know what makes it easier? When most of your core is on rookie contracts, that is the time to do it. And it would help your young quarterback. So Obviously, the, the Dallas Cowboys very well could end up cutting Amari Cooper, but maybe, maybe the, instead of cutting him, they, they get a trade. And it's not going to be a ton. Like, I know people are going to think, oh, Amari Cooper, he's got to fetch a first round pick or maybe a high second even too. I'm not, not necessarily the case. I'm going to go a 2022 third and a 2023 third or fourth round pick. Because again, he's under contract for three more years and his cap hit's going to be around $20 million for those next three years. So that's a lot of money. Not a lot of teams can take that on. The Jets are one of the few that can though. The next guy on my list is someone that intrigues me and that's Daniil Hunter, 28 years old. Now, is that a little bit hypocritical of me to say because of some other players that I didn't want the Jets to take a look at, like Michael Thomas, for instance, because he didn't play a lot over the last couple of years. I guess maybe, but Daniel Hunter fits such a good need for this team, and he is so, so damn good. This year, seven games, six sacks. He missed time with the rest of the year with the pectoral injury. He had double-digit sacks in 2016, 18, and 19. He has two years left remaining on his contract. And what have I been preaching, and what has everyone been preaching about Robert Sala and this defense? They need to get after the passer. And if they do that, or if they use you know some of their picks to get an established one, well, that means they can go a different direction in the draft. For me, I'm at around pick 35 and pick 109, so a second and a fourth for Daniel Hunter. Again, he's going to have a monster, monster, monster cap hit on the Minnesota Vikings. They def desperately need to rebuild. They have a new 
GM and head coach tandem going in there. It, it's it's time for them to start building for the future. And I don't know how good 28 year old edge rushers uh, are, are going to do that for you. But the Jets, a little bit of a different story. They're hopefully trending in the other other direction. So uh, I would be all in on Daniel Hunter. I think that makes sense for this team. Number three and number four, and I should have mentioned this is in no particular order. It's not like preference or anything like that. I literally picked five people, but these next two I'm going to do together because they play for the same team, and that is, and they pretty much share the same name, Preston Smith and Zedaria Smith. So we'll start with Preston. He is 29 years old, nine sacks last year, had a little bit of a down year in 2020 with just four, but 12 in 2019. He has one more year left on his deal, and he's just a steady player, man. He he has been ever since he's been in the league since Washington. I feel like he was underrated, and ironically, the Jets could have signed both Preston or Zedarius, which is exactly what the Green Bay Packers did. Uh, instead, the Jets spent time trying to sign Anthony Barr and move him to edge, and that we know how that worked. It didn't work out. Thank you a lot, Mike McCagnon, but I think you're probably looking at a second round there for him. Say pick 35 or even pick 38. Like if you give up pick, th they're so close that to me, it doesn't matter which one of the two that you give up. Um, but I would give up a, a second rounder for Preston Smith. And the same thing for Zedarius. I think you're probably looking at around the second rounder for him. Now he got hurt in week one, missed the rest of the year, but the three years before that, 12 and a half, 13 and a half, eight and a half sacks. That is a significant upgrade over what the Jets have. And again, he's 29 years old. Both the Smith, I call them the Smith brothers, not really brothers, but both of them are 29 years of age. I think you're looking at probably a second round pick for him. The, the Green Bay Packers are more than likely going to have to rid themselves of one of these guys. And they prefer not to cut them. They prefer to trade for trade them. Obviously, they both have one year left. They both have pretty high cap hits, but they'll be able to relieve themselves of a pretty nice chunk of change if they're able to do that. Their cap situation isn't great. Who knows? If Aaron Rodgers is traded, they might be looking to go into rebuild mode and then just even more picks for them to do just that. So I think it's a fit. If if one of them are on the table, go out and, and pick them, whichever one. It doesn't matter to me. Both, you need an edge rusher, and both those guys fit the bill. And the last guy that I'm going to talk about today is Calvin Ridley, who's 27 years old. And sure, there is risk involved here. Uh, and obviously it's dependent on if he's ready to come back or not As under the assumption that he is, this is a bona fide number one receiver in his prime, 1300 yards in 2020, 1309 touchdowns, his first three years in the league, nine, seven, and 10 touchdowns jets. They don't have players like that. They haven't in such a long time outside of the 20, 2015 season. Like we talked about earlier. The Jets don't have a thousand yard receivers or, or guys who give you anywhere close to 10 touchdowns a year. I hope Elijah Moore turns into that. And maybe if you draft somebody, you hope they turn into that. Uh, Corey Davis, not that good receiver, but not that. But th this would be, again, if he's ready and good to go, a home run. And I think the price tag is not going to be as high as some people are expecting. For instance, I think you can give up a pick in next year in 2023's draft class and have it be a conditional pick. So like a conditional second based on playing time. And if he doesn't play or doesn't, you know, let's say he only plays a handful of games, then that moves back. It's not a second. Maybe it's like a third or a fourth. Uh, or if there's incentives where he hits, you know, a, a, a thousand to 1200 yards and double digit touchdowns then it turns into a first and then you're saying okay maybe you could survive that because if that's the case that means zach wilson's really good and this team's probably close to a playoff team so would you give up a i don't know pick 25 for him but moral of the story is i think that when it comes to calvin ridley if you're looking at a conditional pick for next year and it's going to help your rookie this or your sophomore quarterback in both the short term and long term it intrigues me. It does. Um, is it my favorite option? Probably not, but I don't think it should be dismissed. And no, I don't think he quit on his team. And the conversation around mental health is always a tricky one, but nevertheless, it, it all boils down to this. If he's good to go, I think it's worth a look. So those are my five guys that I think the Jets should at least look at. Are there anyone, is there anyone else in the NFL that you think 
the Jets should look at in a trade. Let me know in the comments below or on social media. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Please make sure to subscribe if you're new. I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll talk to you next time.